Thanks, Matt. Happening now, crews are still on scene of an early morning house fire they say was caused by lightning. NBC 26's Brooke Haves joins us live from the town of Ellington with more on that. Good morning, Brooke. Haley, we are now on Valley View Drive where fire crews are starting to clear out. They finally let us down uh, the road to see the damage and we're seeing it for the first time here. This is uh, the home behind me here and the part of the home that is visible right now, not hidden by that tree. You can see has severe damage. The roof is completely charred off. Um, now two people are without a home. Two people have been displaced by this fire, but they did manage to escape without injury. Now the fire chief says when they arrived on scene, flames were shooting from the roof of this one story home. He says the lightning hit a gas meter, so they struggled with digging up gas lines to fight the fire safely. The Red Cross is assisting those two people displaced. Yeah, everybody was out when we got here. Uh, we did yeah, do a quick uh, a uh, search of the building or house when we got here, but everybody was accounted for uh, and uh, everybody's safe. The fire chief says half the home has severe smoke and fire damage and the other half has smoke and heat damage. He's estimating about $100,000 in damage. Now, as I mentioned right now, crews are cleaning up. They're starting to clear the scene. Um, they are expected to be out of here within the hour. Reporting live in the town of Ellington, Brooke Hafes, NBC 26. Thank you, Brooke. Also overnight, the Brown County Sheriff's Office is investigating a crash in the village of Suamico. NBC 26's Emily Byer is live from the scene with more on that. Emily. Haley, officials have confirmed that a 21-year-old woman is dead following this crash. Deputies were called here to the scene around 11.30 last night for a one-vehicle rollover on Lakeview Drive here in Suamico. Police say a 20-year-old woman was driving southbound on County Highway J when she failed to make a curve and rolled over into an embankment. Police say the weather was not a factor in the crash but did play a challenging role in the crash reconstruction. We were unable to use our total recall station, which is a piece of equipment we used for accident re-investigation. Um, we had to go by older methods of measuring it. Normally we'll paint marks and stuff and it was just impossible with the rain. Three women were in the vehicle during the crash. A 21-year-old female passenger was thrown from the vehicle. Police say she was not wearing a seatbelt and was pronounced dead at the scene. The other passenger, a 23-year-old woman, was transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the 20-year-old driver refused medical transport at the scene. Now, police tell us that they do believe alcohol is a factor in this crash. Charges are pending. We hope to learn more on that later this morning. For now, reporting live in Swamico, Emily Byer, NBC 26. Thank you, Emily. Well, parts of Highway 76 in Winnebago County are closed right now because of a two car crash. We're told the crash happened around two o'clock this morning and is affecting all lanes of Highway 76 at Oak Ridge Road in Nina. We don't know if anyone was injured and the detour asks northbound traffic to exit at Breezewood Lane. Southbound traffic should exit at Larson Road. And we are we were seeing a lot of power outages overnight and this morning when we take a look at Wisconsin Public Services outage map. There are only a handful of customers without power in Green Bay and Nina. Earlier, more than 1,000 were without power in the Green Bay area and overnight thousands in the Nina and Oshkosh areas were also affected. Some veterans behind bars are getting another chance at a better life. Yesterday, an expo was held to assist incarcerated veterans with job placement, health care and housing when they finish up their sentences. The Department of Veterans Affairs was part of the expo. They say these men who fought for our country know they've made mistakes, but still deserve a second chance at life. Uh, people make mistakes and, uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, I I, I routinely tell the staff sometimes that there's only one guy that ever walked this earth that was perfect. The Department of Corrections says the ultimate goal is to help veterans stay out of trouble. A mock tornado watch is scheduled for today along with a mock warning as part of tornado and severe weather awareness week. The first drill will take place at one o'clock with a mock watch and that at 145 a mock warning will be issued. A second mock warning will also be issued at 645 and it gives schools, businesses and families the chance to test their emergency plans. Severe weather does ramp up in the months ahead, and that's definitely a great thing that they have going on for today to practice in the case of severe weather. Now, we should see things quieting down today. That's some good news. Still some steadier rain, especially to the north and east of Green Bay. That is going to be moving on out. 
as we go through the next uh, hour or so. Some more showers up to the north and just some spotty activity around the Fox Valley and down through Sheboygan. Temperatures are in the 40s to start off your Thursday. A little bit blustery out there as well with those winds out of the northeast, dropping wind chills down into the 30s. Your day planner today, cloudy skies on the cooler side. Many areas will be stuck in the 40s and just a spotty shower sprinkle possible the rest of today. Haley. A lot of people are still talking about Bill O'Reilly this morning. He was fired from Fox News amid a sexual harassment scandal. A board of people from 21st Century Fox is scheduled to meet today about what happens next. Fox executives called an emergency meeting yesterday about the situation and announced O'Reilly wouldn't return to Fox News. He says the accusations are lies. Still a lot of questions this morning about disgraced NFL star Aaron Hernandez's apparent suicide in prison. He reportedly wrote John 316 on his forehead in red marker. There are also reports investigators think he smoked synthetic marijuana before hanging himself. His lawyer, Jose Baez, says Hernandez wasn't suicidal and vowed to conduct his own investigation into what happened. New details now about the man police say killed three white men in a racially motivated rampage. Investigators say Corey Muhammad laughed and admitted to the murders three Tuesday and one last week. Muhammad helped police make a map detailing his every move. And after last week's killing, he says he hid on a 7-Eleven roof, then prepared for his next attack. Stayed in a ravine uh, Friday through Sunday where he practiced uh, what was described to him as voodoo rituals. In an online video from 2015, Muhammad says he joined a gang at nine years old and then joined the Black Liberation Movement at 19. He does have a criminal history, including gun, drug and theft arrests. In Washington, foreign policy dominates headlines today with the Trump administration trying to figure out how to tear up the nuclear deal with Iran and explaining why a ship that was supposed to be headed to North Korea wasn't. Tracy Potts brings us up to speed from Washington. Hi Haley, good morning everyone. Let's start with Iran and the nuclear deal that President Trump calls weak. Now his administration is trying to figure out, can they get rid of it? Secretary of State Rex Tillerson accuses Iran of sponsoring terrorists, violating human rights, and making the Middle East unstable. An unchecked Iran has the potential to travel the same path as North Korea and take the world along with it. But he admits Iran is complying with the nuclear deal. The State Department is reviewing whether the U.S. should stick with it. To tear up the Iran deal, in my view, would mean that we would be giving Iran a license to go and get a nuclear weapon. Not only does that defy logic, but it adversely affects American security interests. President Trump calls it a bad deal, but analysts worry there's a risk going against the agreement to impose sanctions. If sanctions are reimposed on Iran, Iran could walk from the deal. But the White House realizes getting out of this deal could be tricky. We're well aware of um, any potential negative impacts that an action could have. The administration's also explaining why a strike group that was supposed to be headed towards North Korea. We are sending an armada. Was actually well, going in the opposite direction. Uh, she will be on her way and I'll determine uh, when she gets there. Analysts say promising helps on the way when it's not could rattle our allies in Asia, counting on the U.S. for protection from another missile launch. Now officials say that aircraft carrier is headed toward the Korean Peninsula, expected to arrive next week. From Washington, Tracy Potts, NBC 26. Well, that messy battle to repeal and replace Obamacare could soon be back at center stage. According to CNN, the White House wants to get a new bill through before President Trump's first 100 days are over. Now, that's April 29th. Its source said the issue isn't the bill itself. It's a trust gap saying a vote will come once that's fixed. Congress is back from its recess next week. Of course, we will keep you posted. A Fox Valley manufacturer it lands a major government contract. Oshkosh Corporation has secured $258 million in orders to rebuild trucks to make trailers for the Army. The company will rebuild more than 650 heavy tactical vehicles and will produce more than 350 vehicle trailers. The military contracts support thousands of jobs at Oshkosh Corporation, one of the Fox Valley's largest manufacturers. 
Feeding America and UW Oshkosh will partner with the Oshkosh Hunger Task Force for a mobile food pantry today. 50,000 pounds of food will be given to people in need. So stop by the Colf Sports Center from 4 until 6 o'clock. Pre-registration is not required and you are asked to bring your own boxes and bags and to arrive early as lines can get long. Appleton's Mila Music just keeps growing and growing, and today the co-founders of the event will announce the first 50 artists to perform at this year's Mile 5. The announcement is at 11.45 this morning at Outer Edge Stage in Appleton. The festival runs August 3rd through the 6th. Well, coming up this morning, some new developments in the United Airlines case, what the company has to give to a Senate committee by today. And the clouds and rain from today going to keep temperatures down on the cooler side, but milder weather moves on in for the end of the week onto your weekend. We'll have a full look at your forecast right through this upcoming weekend. Coming up next, stay tuned at 641 on your Thursday morning. And now, your Storm Shield forecast with NBC26 meteorologist Matt Hoffman. It's a soggy start out to your Thursday, but the steadiest rainfall is now starting to push on out of northeast Wisconsin. It's 43 degrees right now in the valley, a very wet look at College Avenue this morning. 37 degrees is the current wind chill. Here's a look at Storm Shield radar showing again some of those light to moderate rain showers. The steadiest rain now pushing out of Green Bay and mainly to the east of I-43. Appleton just a few spotty showers and sprinkles around the area. Temperatures are